so pleased to have as my guest, my co-anchor, <laughs> Ann Craig. Um, and I wanted to have her on because you've made a decision about your career, your life, and that is after 20 years, you're stepping away from news. Right. Um, I'm calling you the chief of your household now. You're going home to be with your kids, your husband, and I call it a reset. It is. It's a huge chapter, and I like to think of it as a new chapter in my life because this job has been everything for the last 22 years. I knew this was the business I wanted to do from the age I was six. I've lived. How did in you know that? Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters. I was watching a TV special with my mom, and she was on TV, and Tom Cruise was being interviewed, and I said to my mom, "Mom, she didn't ask the right questions. So when I get older, I want to ask the questions." So I was always very curious as a child, and it was the curiosity that brought me to this business. You grew up in Kentucky. You tell folks that you are a woman of faith, which absolutely. you are. Absolutely. And I'm a preacher's daughter. There you go. So that, that's the whole story right there. <laughs> yes. But this was not a decision you came to in the last week or two or a month. Describe that for me. No, not at all. Um, it, it, it's like where to start with this decision, right? Um, so I, like I was saying, I was so driven about this business that I always put career first. And the first time in my career that I realized, whoa, what am I doing here, was when I got married at 34, which was wonderful, but I really wanted to have kids. And I always thought that was a given. You know, you're told from the time that you're a girl and you're given a baby doll, it'll happen. We hit a real roadblock in trying to have a baby. And um, as you know, you interviewed me early on, we had five years of infertility. I was working in New York City in the number one market in the country, doing my absolute dream job. I loved it, but I was working hard and long hours. That didn't meet well for me in my life trying to have a baby. And so we had multiple losses. And that was the first time that I said, whoa, can you get everything in life? Can you have? a high-powered, successful, driven career that you love and get the family. And I really, really question that. Well, I think something's got to give, right? You and I are both moms. I have three children. I've been in this business almost 40 years. You, 22. And you can have it all, but on many days, the bottom falls out, right. where it just doesn't work like you think you're like it's gonna work. I've been blessed because I have a husband who was a Mr. Mom when I was not, but I missed some things along the way. I had a set of twins um, and an older child too. And I think a lot of folks are looking up to you in that you said, you know, I have two children. We worked hard to get them on this planet. Right. I need to, I'll use the term again, reset, take a look at what I'm doing. And I keep saying to you, because I'm older than you are, life is short. Oh gosh, life is short. And it gets shorter all the time. And, you know, I think as people have, have seen you make this decision and walk away from something that you love, right. who knows what your future is, but you're gonna have your kids intact. You know, when you say life is short, it literally, the shortness comes to me at this point in my life in the shortness of a crib. So I have two miracle babies and my son Jet is two and a half and he's in this crib. And I've been working nights ever since my kids were born and so, as much as I have loved being here and loved talking to Connecticut and putting them to bed at night, my heart tells me, oh my gosh, my baby is about to grow out of this crib and I've never been there to put him down to bed at night, Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, when you think, oh, please, Ann, you get your chance on the weekend, what are you complaining about? He wants daddy because daddy's the person that does it Monday through Friday. So I am so excited about this new adventure to find the mom that I want to be. And it's so interesting. And people on Facebook say to me, I saw you at Beardsley Zoo. I saw you at the aquarium. And then you're anchoring the 11 o'clock newscast. How are you doing it? And I would always think, how, how am I doing it? And we all know, right? You can't do all things well all the time. And so migraines happened to me in the last year and a half. And I think it was my body that raised the red flag of hey, Ann, you're not catching on here, so we're sending you signals in the form of you can't feel the right side of your face and your right arm, and you have these stabbing headaches to let you know this is a health wake-up call. You've got to do things differently here. But I've been fighting it for a year and a half. You ask me how long have I, I've been thinking about this for a year and a half because I love this. 
I and it's what I dreamed about. So it's such an interesting thing. Who walks away from their dream, right? But that's where you're exactly right. I've got to redefine the dream. And, and what does success mean? Success doesn't just mean a career title or an achievement, but I want to be successful in my home as a mother and as a wife. I got to learn to cook. <laughs> you know, I really want to take some <laughs> cooking lessons you're, you're and do that. something but other you're than time, right? No, I mean I, I'm the queen of Kraft mac and cheese and frozen nuggets, and so I dream about being one of those moms that makes a healthy meal on the table and and actually getting to have dinner with my kids. So I have a new set of goals. And I'm so motivated by other women during this year and time with Googling, can you be successful after you leave a successful job? And there's so many women that really lead the way for me. One of them, Vera Wang, did you know that she was an ice skater? And she was a journalist. I did it. I'm not she sure was, why I know that, but I did. But before she was Multiple a designer. Multiple things, right? Multiple, Multiple things. things. Julia Child worked for the Secret Service, for Secret Intelligence. She wrote her cookbook at age 50. I'm not there yet, so I have some time to do You're some so things. so very young. <laughs> right? And then Ariana Huffington, I've been reading her book, Thrive, and it talks about redefining success and really listening to your body and having a health crisis and knowing success can come in all different forms but it can't come in the form of the erosion of your family and the relationships in your life and that book was speaking to me you know really speaking to me you have lived more than 20 years on deadline you yes. and I you and I yes. both deadline 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 there's no such thing as it's not going to happen and we right. rush and rush and rush right I'm wondering now that you're going to have some time and you're not going to live on deadline um, how are you going to handle that? Or will you go, hey, it's time to eat, let's go? You know, that honestly not having the deadline is the thing that terrifies me. Because you know you and I are in this business because you run on the adrenaline of a deadline. Now, I'm going to have mom deadlines, you know, get to preschool on time, pick up the kids on time. That's not fulfilling enough for me. And I don't mean that to sound horribly because honestly, Anne, the thing that's so terrifying is being a mom is the hardest job there is, right? There's no Absolutely. thanks, there's no kudos, there's no raise, there's no pats if on the back. If we got paid for being a mom, if women right. got paid for being a mom, right. they would be millionaires, right? Absolutely. So that's why that is terrifying to me. So I'm redefining and finding and reinventing new bucket lists, new challenges, new dreams, and making that list of the things that I want to accomplish, but after some time. Right. What's the first thing you're going to do? So <laughs> as, we, as we tape this, your, your last one on the air is, is Wednesday. Wednesday. So Thursday comes. What happens Thursday? You know, I've thought about that, and isn't this funny? What happens? We have water in our basement, so I actually made an appointment. Who does it right now, right? right? I made an appointment on Thursday to have a basement guy come and, like, help us get water out of the basement. So just very basic things. But Friday, I feel like I'm going to rediscover my husband. So on Friday, I'm going into the city, and we're going to have lunch together because we have been almost married 10 years in our entire relationship, Monday through Friday, We've never been on the same schedule. We've never been able to see each other Monday through Friday. And so now I get a, it's like we'll be dating again. I'm so excited to not only find my kids, but to find my husband and really strengthen the relationships that mean so much to me. You said, and I, I know other women struggle with this too, how, how do I work? How do I be a mom? How do I be a good wife? It, it's a huge struggle for so many women. Um, when you came this, to this decision, and you, you said to me you were thinking about it for about a year and a half, yeah. what was the one thing where you said, I'm going to do it? I'm going to give my notice. Wow. And I'm going to, and it's time. And did you feel like you were f free falling mm. when you did that? Yes, 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 yes. I think if my parents and my family and friends were to answer that question, they'd say, oh my gosh, Anne, she was wavering back and forth, and it wasn't like this one moment. But I've been reading a book called Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nyquist, and that book is about faith and trusting in God, but also really relishing the sweetness of life. And I felt like I was closing the door to my children. With the migraines, you literally close the door to your children. But I wanted to find my soul again and feel nourished. And um, 
I, I don't mean that to say that my career soul wasn't being nourished, it was, but my whole self. So I'm gonna rediscover my whole self and have this reawakening. Does that make sense? It, it makes total sense to me. And you and I have talked about the fact that um, when this business was really ramped up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we have colleagues, right, women, who wanted to get to the network level mm. or New York City or LA or whatever it was, and they gunned it, gunned it, gunned it, turned around, they were 40 years old, they forgot to get married, didn't have children, and went, Oh my gosh. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Can I reset? Well, no, you can't. You're 40 now. Right. And so I think all of us in this business or whatever business women are in, you have to look at the big picture all the time. And sometimes when you're in the job that you love, you're doing it, doing it, doing it. And then you look back and say, oh, oh my gosh, what happened? Right. And I, I realize um, when it comes to accomplishments, you know, and especially not to be so morbid, but when it comes to your obituary, you'll never say, I covered 200 snowstorms. I stood out in the snow for 17 hours. You know, I was there on hurricane night and I was there, you know, countless elections. But you really want people to recite, she had a good heart. She really touched people. She was present in my life as a friend, as a mother. I, I think about my children and their children and the gifts that I want to give to them. And I think that starts with being present. I, Sandy Hook was a huge story for me, Anne, because I struggled to get pregnant. And I just found out that I was pregnant the day that I was sent to cover Sandy Hook. And I just remember having such an overflow of emotions. And it, it it brings tears to my eyes now because it was a baby that I so longed for. And I thought about all those parents that longed for their child. And every child is a miracle. And these parents got the worst news of their life on the same day that I got the best news in my life. And, I, and so now one of the moms, Jesse Lewis, he was a boy killed on Sandy Hook. His mom's name is Scarlett. Scarlett has chosen an organization that she started called Choose Love Movement. And it's really about how as children, and she'll say, you know, Adam Lanza wasn't born to be a mass murderer, but if he had more love in his life and more guidance in his life and more kindness and, and led to choose love over anger, and if we can all help children choose love over anger, what gifts that we can give. And so it, it starts in your own home, right? And so for me, I just want my kids to do good and be kind to others. And, and so right now, at this point in my life, right now, that's where my heart is, is that my home is calling me home. And I love that you say, what, chief operating officer of my home. Absolutely. And boy, good luck to the people who, who are living there with you, because you're going to crack the whip. <laughs> I, I often think um, that people, when we're reporters or when we're um, anchoring the news, we're two-dimensional, right? We're not three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you like this uh, and have a frank dis uh, discussion because we, we are people too and we have just the same problems and life is a struggle like it is with everybody else. But, but they see you as Ann Craig anchoring the news and life must be wonderful or whatever right. it is that they think. But we're just like everybody else. Absolutely. And, uh, um, we have scars, we have, we have everything else. I wonder what people, um, what people said to you inside the business and outside the business when you said, you know, I got to walk away from now. I just, I, I, I have to do this. What have they said to you? So much celebration around it, you know? It's, it's been really interesting. I feel so lucky to make this choice. You know, and it was a difficult choice to make, but um, our news director here, Keith Connors, when I told him, he was <laughs> flabbergasted and could not believe it, but stood up and gave me the biggest hug and said, way to go, you know, way to go. We're going to miss you, of course, but what a great decision to make. And on Facebook, uh, you know, ever, so many mothers have written to me, I made this decision. I did it 30 years ago. My kids are now grown and have their own children, and there's no regrets in making this decision. Um, from my moms that are stay-at-home moms, the perspective is different. They say, oh boy, and you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna be an ebb and flow. You're gonna have a lot of hard days. You're gonna miss the scheduled life. Um, and I know, I feel like I'm choosing the more difficult thing because Coming to New Zealand on many days with toddlers has felt like a vacation. So I know to being at home with kids all day is challenging. It's really challenging. And I, my fear in all this is that I'm going to 
feel like I'm losing myself or losing my identity. And, I think you're um, going to be finding yourself. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm wondering... That's beautiful. Thank you. I'm wondering if you might not feel very empowered by this decision that you've made. And, you know, I've said this to you before, be a, um, a guiding light for mm. other women who said, you know, I'm, I'm, as they watch this, I'm thinking about this too, I'm thinking about this too. And I don't think we have these frank conversations right. between women about what we're really thinking. Right, you right. Know? So I, I think along the line, you may be empowering others, oh. which is what I want you to think and what I w want you to know is, and, and I said this to you, I was in a bookstore the other day and we were, we were talking about you and that, you know, you're gonna reset. And they said, I did it too. I mm -hmm. walked away from a huge job in New York City. I couldn't take the stress anymore. I, I knew my kids needed me. I was denying that. Um, I, I just, we lived a simpler life and it was awesome. My kids right. are now raised, married, doing their own thing. And she said, I don't have one regret. That's I don't awesome. have one regret. So I think... And those women encourage me, you know? Absolutely. But I think we grew up in a time where, you know, gun, 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 gun. And, and, and you have to be empowered. And, but we are multifaceted beings, mm -hmm. right? We can do a lot of different things right. at once. And I just, I, you know, some people would say to you, oh, that's so courageous, you, you know, you stepped away, but who knows what's down the pike for you? Right, that's what, it's been really interesting that people will say, and, and, and I have put out there 22 years in broadcast television, and people will say, you're retiring, congratulations. I hate that word. Well, I do too, <laughs> and I've, I've said, I'm not retired, I'm inspired. And that's really how I feel about this time, is that I have great gifts from this business and I've learned so much along the way and I want to apply them to my next thing. I don't know what that next thing is at the moment, but I can tell you the same drive and ambition that I had that got me to the number one market and to my dream job here as a main evening anchor is the same drive and ambition I have right now to check off those other bucket list items. And you and I have talked about it. I've dreamed about writing children's books ever since my kids have been born. I'm so blessed to have the time to do what it. Is that? With time? I don't know. <laughs> you know, Oprah, You're going to find out. Oprah Winfrey, also the queen of media, who I adore, and um, I've been searching for inspiration, you know, along the way of making this decision. So I've been listening to her podcast. Maybe you listen to it too, Super Soul Conversations. Oprah starts everyone saying, you know, the best gift that we can give each other and give ourselves is time. And I never felt like I had time, man. I was waking up in the morning and taking my kids to school and race, 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 race. Now I got them to school, race back home, prepare for the day, race to the shower, race to make lunch for the kids, race on 995 to get here to work, race back home because I got to get at least five hours of sleep. So I'm so excited to put my life on pause and just breathe and give myself this gift of time and I know it's a small window but it's a window that I am so excited to open up and just see what happens once you made the decision and you stepped back you know my mother used to always say get a legal pad out and put pros and cons down about Mine every too. really Mine too. yes seen, well, I've done it all my life my mom was from Indiana you're from Kentucky right yes, yes so you know that was pros and cons and pros and cons yes so after you made the decision and you told folks that you were going to step away. Was it, or, oh, I've made a mistake, or did you did you resonate on it for a second and just go, I felt good. I felt good. The year and a half of wrestling has not felt good. You know that's that's been the real struggle. And my husband, I have to give him real kudos in all this because he has been a dad that comes home from a long day and a big commute and he's faced two toddlers alone and getting them to bed in the evening and um, a lot of this has come from him as much as he supported me in my career he said what every husband should say and what every wife wants to hear them say right I need you I miss you I want you to be home and so I was, hey, 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 
I've worked, I've worked a long time. I've lived in podunk markets. I've done every weekend shift I could. I've been the first to raise my hand and volunteer for that shift. I've missed holidays with my family. Thanksgiving's in, don't, I can't quit this. And so it's been hard on my, on my marriage because we've really struggled with the push and pull of, you know, I need you at home and I'm a career person. And, and then I thought, what a gift, right? What woman doesn't want to hear that their husband wants to be with them? You know, what a gift that he's giving me to say, you know, we'll lose financially, right? I mean, I'm losing an income. Our family will be okay. We're going to take this step back and, and redefine not only who I am, but who we are as a family. And um, it's exciting. One more question before we wrap this up. For women listening to this interview who are on edge about what do I do, what do I do, do I stay home, do I stay, do I stay home, do I stay? What's the best piece of advice you would give them? Mm. I would say in making this decision for me, it took time. Uh, I was asking everyone, you know, hey mom, what do you think about this? Or girlfriends at lunch, what do you think about this? But it ultimately didn't matter. Any opinions didn't matter. I needed to silence what other people thought I should be doing and find in my inner core, and what do you want to be doing? What is your source of happiness telling you? What's your ambition? What are your goals in life? And when the goals in life say, I want to be a good wife and a good mother and a good friend, I want to contribute to my society, I want to leave the world a better place than I found it, and I don't mean to be too Pollyanna, but I just, um, I just, I need to step back because I'm exhausted. <laughs> Frankly, I'm exhausted. Um, the 11 o'clock show has been a gift. I love working with Darren Kramer. I love you know, you and I have anchored many times. This station is a fantastic place filled with wonderful people. I will miss it tremendously, but I'm just going to give myself this gift of time. And thanks for being an inspiration mm -hmm. to all of us. And go get them. Thank you, Anne. Thanks. Thank you so much. Spend all night kissing and if Walter's right here then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution and find the keys to the door but it's also a metaphor Need to keep locked in the grocery store of a mind Just to save time, skip right ahead to the last ride